Today's Wayward Ornithopter video is about putting those flight data overlays on your videos. Here's how the footage comes straight out of your Bebop. And I've had a few queries in comments about how to add these overlays, so I thought I'd try and give a quick run through of how I do it. And the best part is, it doesn't cost anything. All the software you need to create these overlays is absolutely free. There are two applications you need. The first one is Flight Data Manager. It's PC only. So it runs on Windows 7, 8 and 10. I use Macs, but I've set both my iMac and my MacBook Pro to also boot into Windows using Boot Camp. If you're a Mac user and you want to do this, you will need to do the same. So if you need to know how to do that, just Google Boot Camp, all one word, and there's great YouTube videos showing you how to do it. So you will install Flight Data Manager for Parrot Bebop drones. It's completely free and it runs on the Parrot Bebop and the Parrot Bebop 2. Once you've fully installed that, you then need to go to the second piece of software, which is produced by Garmin, the SatNav and fitness GPS device people. And it's a free piece of software called Garmin VIRB or Verb Edit. Don't know how to pronounce it, I always say Verb. Again, it's a free download. This one runs on PC and on Mac whichever one you want to install and install that onto your computer. I will say before you start playing with either app make sure that you've installed them both. So once you open up Flight Data Manager I'm not going to go into detail about all the screens but two important things. One is the first time you run the application you need to have already installed Garmin Verb because clicking the button that's highlighted with the mouse there will install templates designed specifically for the Bebop drones, the Bebop and the Bebop 2. So making sure you've already installed Verb Edit, click on that button and it will install the templates for you. The other thing to remember is the data it gets is from the Drone Academy. Once you've got the data from your drone to your controller device, iPhone, Android phone, iPad, it's on the device but it's not yet in the cloud. Make sure if you've not got a web connected 3G or 3GS or 4G uh, phone or tablet, when you get home, connect to the web and connect to your drone academy and my pilotings so that the data that's come from the drone to your controller goes up to the cloud and is available in the drone academy. Because now when you click on load data from drone academy, I now enter my username, password, I've clicked on remember me so I don't have to put that in again and it will download the data from the Drone Academy. And the important part is the date and the time of the flight on the left hand side because that will make sure that you know that the data you've downloaded corresponds to the right video. So you're looking at a Bebop video that's time stamped as the 27th of August at 16.07. And all you do is double click on that and it will show you a graph with all the data relating to that flight. You can have a good nose around the data. You can check and uncheck the boxes at the bottom to show different altitudes. You can see a map view. And once you've seen that, you then click on export data to files. Once you click export data to files, a dialog box will ask where you want to save the data files. I strongly recommend you save them in the folder where you've got your original Bebop video. In this case I called it 1607. It then asks if I want to open the KML file in Google Earth. I'm not going to bother, it simply shows your chart on Google Earth as to where you flew. And we've now done with Flight Data Manager. So we now go into Garmin Verb Edit. And to start with we need to create video. Clicking on that will then ask you to name it and I'm calling this Bebop 1607 because I know 1607 helps me to identify the right data file and the right Bebop video and I need to import it so I click on import clips and photos. I'm not importing it from a Garmin device or a USB, I'm importing it from the folder where I've saved the data files. So I click on Import Other. It's taking me to the folder 1607, and there's the file Bebop 2 2016 08 27 1607. That's the date and timestamp. So I know that's the video 
that I want to put the overlay on. So I click on that and click open and it gives me the option to copy clips or just import them. I don't see any point in copying the clip into my Garmin folder, it's just going to take up more hard drive space. Import only. Quick as a flash, it's done. That's in real time. I then now need to drag that video down into the clips area at the bottom. And once I've done that, the next thing I need to do is add what Garmin Verb Edit calls G-Metrics. So I click on G-Metrics and I need to import them from the folder where I saved them. So I go into On My Computer, Browse and go to that folder which if you remember I called 1607 and I've got a file there called Do Not Use. There's a subtle clue in the name of that file so you completely ignore that one. The two files you're interested in are the .fit files. One is in feet and one is in meters. I'm sure my American colleagues will want to use feet and my European colleagues will want to use meters and we Brits get all confused because we use miles and meters. But I'm going to use meters. I try and be consistent. Click on that file and click open. It will then show me where that file relates to on a map and I can see that is the flight I'm thinking about. That's where I was on the 27th of August at 4.07 in the afternoon. So use this log. Now I need to find an overlay. It's put one on if you look at the little dashboard on the right hand side of the screen but that's not the overlay I want. I want to use the ones that are saved in the templates folder that were created by Flight Data Manager and they're in custom. So click on custom and you can see various templates. Template one is for the Bebop one in meters. The next one is template one for the Bebop two in meters. If you'd gone with feet instead of meters, it would say it in feet. The one I really like is template seven. Template seven there, ah, that's for the Bebop one. I was flying a Bebop two. So the next template is template seven for the Bebop two and it's in meters. So I just click it and there we are, quick as a flash on the screen on the right it shows me how that will look. And if I just press play you can see the overlay is in the right place on the video, it's showing the speed, the altitude and what have you. But I can have a little play with this. By clicking and dragging I can move that flight map, the flight path, up to the top left corner a bit further out the way. Everything on that screen can be clicked and dragged, you can delete it, you can add different gauges and dials. The first thing I like to do is change the colour. So accent 1 is the graphs. So by clicking on green for accent 1 it's turned the graphs green. And accent 2 shows the dials yuck. Let's try pale blue. That looks quite nice. I can also alter the background but I don't tend to. Leave it at 60% but that's up to you to have a play, see what you like. The other thing I can do is I can add different gauges. Now what isn't on here, I've got the Wi-Fi signal, the distance the drone is from me, the distance the drone's flown, I've got a speed indicator, a direction indicator, an altimeter, a nice graph showing the uh, altitude of the drone and a battery meter. What I haven't got is the date and time. So under gauges from all data types I zoom in on time and I want date and time. And the one I'm after is one that's got the date and the time together. And there it is at the bottom. So I'm just going to click and drag that onto the screen and put it where I want it. And I'm happy with that. So now that all that remains for me to do is to export. And it will export a video that's a combination of the original Bebop footage and the overlay. You have options here about the quality which governs the file size. No point going higher than 1080 because 1080 is what the drone shot the video in. Lower will reduce the quality but save your disk storage space. You can see by dropping it down to HD 720 I've saved a bit. 
at 1080 it's currently taking half a gig. As with HD, no point going over 30 frames a second. If I drop the quality down from medium to low, it drops the file size down to 200 meg. Medium's half a gig. High, 800 meg. And max is just over a gig. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to go low. I would normally use medium or high. Then I want to browse the folder where I want to save the video. And again, I like to save it in the same folder, keep everything neat. So I'm looking for that folder called 1607. There it is. Select folder and export. This now takes between 5 and 25, 30 minutes, depending on how big the file is, how complex the render is. And once that's completed, you're done. And in the folder where you saved it will be the video with the overlay included. And it'll look something like this. I hope you found that useful. If you have, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and remember to stay safe. Keep you, your bebop and other people out of harm's way. Please follow your local Civil Aviation Authority code and happy flying!